Interesting detail is that D Rose <clears throat> is also a cousin with FBG Duck from STL slash EBT. As many. Yeah! What the f? I did not know that. Hold on. So you telling me one of your main muff ops was your blood cousin? God damn them skinny jeans. Skinny as hell, boy. What the f? You can't even fit the muff into your muff jeans over this. Timberland boo! What's good, YouTube? Today, man, we got the story of D-Rose and 600, part one. We only gonna be doing, like, I say 30 minutes because it takes hella long to render in Sony Vegas for some odd reason, even though I got a graphics card in my laptop. But, hey, let's get right into it. I'm eating right now. Some of you niggas in the comments talking about some, oh, why are you eating? It sounds disgusting. Shut your big ass up. How about that? And continue watching and enjoying it. You dig what I'm saying? So, hey, y'all see what that say. And y'all see what that say. So hit that motherfucking subscribe button. But, hey, let's get right into it. Before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the support I received from you. And as always, all the information in my videos is rumors taken from the internet or the street. I'm not saying the information is fact. Mm. I hate this fucking music, bro. I hate the music combined with his voice. This shit gives me the creeps. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's because people used to come through shooting us every day. Yeah, this block. Uh, words can't even explain. Uh, can't even explain. Hey, man, what's my Yo, money, man. They in the building. 600 boy, LA, man. LA Capone, man. Get to him, man. Don't see two boys, man. T, you doing on the net, man. Never had to shoot him, you You have to be willing to die or go to jail for a hundred years if that's the lane that you're stepping in. You have to understand that whether you're 15, 16, you got to think like a man. You know what I'm saying? Don't be in a, oh, you're not? Uh, Why does everybody say you're only 16 years old? They say what they want to say. How old, so are, you? how old are you? 300. <laughs> <laughs> the story of D. Rose and... God damn. <coughs> <coughs> Y'all almost saw me die live. God damn. God damn me thick as hell. 600. You know how I'm like the man is. He goes from 600, man. Follow me on um, Instagram. Speed drag, he rolls. You know, niggas know how I rock. You know, shut out all them. I don't want blocks. This nigga was hot off. Man, this nigga was hot off everything. This nigga got had a perp, drunk some lean, and motherfucking hit a blunt. God damn, nigga. Folks don't know how I'm rocking. He and this bitch loose as hell. I'm just, you know, trying to be a real nigga. Get some hard It's real hard, man. A lot of niggas. We just gonna get our shit together. The whole squad, the whole game. This is the first part of a long series of videos about Brick City and 600. I will go through the whole story, go deep into the story of D-Rose, Cide, Rondo, Tay 600, L.A. Capone, Lil Boo and d Thank, all the wars, the music, the fallout and the present. Brick City and 600 really has a unique story, at one point they hit all the cloud in the city, their name rang bells, they put fear in their enemies and had huge music labels coming after them. However, in the gang environment, you are rarely king for too long. Every gang has their downfall. For those of you who follow my community page, know that this series will largely be about D. Rose, his life and his outcome. 
but as I mentioned earlier, I will cover everything. I hope you will enjoy this series of videos, do not forget to subscribe like and comment. I go. Is that D thing? And is this C day? I think that's D thing and C day. Let me know down in the comments. Yeah, give him some foot footage, man. Man, give me a dunk over here, man. Do something. I'm jocked up, check me out, nigga. Jocked up. Give me some book footage, man. Give me some three points or something, man. Oh, man, I'm not high. I'm not high. Man, I ain't gonna lie. Get to the motherfucking story. I'm not trying to see these niggas play ball. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not trying to see this old ass video. These old. No, I'm cool. I'm not trying to see these niggas play ball. I'm sorry. If y'all want to see it, shit. I don't know what to tell y'all. D. Rose, whose real name is Ever Sardine, was born on June 10th, 1996 in Chicago, Illinois. As many of you have already heard. D. Rose's last name is Sardine? D. Rose grew up in Motown territory with his dad and mother. However, when <clears throat> D. Rose was really young, he lived in the suburbs before they moved to Motown when D. Rose was three years old. D. Rose has three younger siblings, a sister named Amaya, also known as Lil Pink, who you probably know, and then two younger brothers, Amir and Armani. Lil Pink was mostly known for being a member of the group Pretty in Pink, PNP, and for being the sister of D. Rose. She also hung around with most of the members of both 600 and O-Block. She was also known for fighting. There is even a video of her fighting Dice from OBN, which she lost. By the way, Dice is the girl who snitched on Zhu Blow from 600 for a murder, which will come later in the story. Both D. Rose's mom, Motasha, and dad, Allery, were originally from Motown. His father, Allery Sardine, also known as General Ranger, was a well-respected black peace stone from Motown who was mostly known for making money. However, Ranger was not only known for street business, he was a very respected man in the hood for giving back to his community. Him and a few others of the Big Moes used to get together and buy book bags for the kids in school and also arranged events where they passed out toys and whatnot to kids. He was really loved by the kids in the hood, he gave back to his community. Every year after the Bud Billiken Parade, he even used to rent out yellow school buses and take every kid from the hood, who wanted to go, to Six Flags. Most time back in the day, General Ranger in, the, in black with dreads. It's about one, two, it's about two niggas in black with dreads. But take this nigga got cornrows though. So I'm guessing it's this nigga right here. God damn, D. Your sister fine as hell, boy. What in the fuck? What in the fuck? Come on. So D. Rose was one of them niggas. Like he, was, he had all the games. His mama, fo, his mama, man, his <clears throat> mama, bro, her name Otasha, bro, she's such a good lady, man, like, and she from the streets, bro, but, like, and she had D-Rose and his three siblings, nigga, and she was raising all of them, doing the best that she can, fo, like, you feel me, like, D-Rose's mama so strong, man, you know what I'm saying, like, 
of D Rose's mama, all her baby daddies died. She got three, four different baby daddies, you feel me? All of them died some weird ass way out the blue, man. Armani daddy, the last one I actually knew her daddy, he was a cool ass dude, man. He died of a heart attack out the blue. So D Rose, mama, Motasha, the whole time D Rose been in and out of jail, and you feel me? She been supporting her son and taking care of the other three siblings by herself. You feel me? Like that's why when D Rose was going down for these cases and he want, the guys weren't supporting him and come and he wasn't having lawyers and all that. It was so wrong because his mama stood on that business. She did the best she could. She was raising her son in jail and her other three kids, making sure they got through to this life. You know what I'm saying? Like, his mama is the ultimate, one of the most respected mamas in the hood. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? However, General Ranger was not an angel. That's not what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> he was definitely involved in gang life and did bad things. He had a dozen arrests dating between 1995 and 2005. It was mostly petty crimes like possession of cannabis but also more serious crimes like domestic battery, possession of a stolen vehicle and possession of cocaine. However, a few bad actions does not define a man. Again, I'm not saying he was an angel, because he was not. I'm just saying you need to understand where they come from and that you still have one big heart despite doing bad things. General Ranger was shot and killed by two guys named Darcy Wiley, also known as Donut, and Christopher Gatewood, who had planned to rob Ranger for money and marijuana at a Fort Worth apartment complex on July 28, 2006, in Texas. However the robbery went horribly wrong. Following a confrontation, where Ranger refused to give them any money or drugs, both Ranger and Donut's friend, Christopher, Ended up getting shot and died at the scene. According. Damn! <clears throat> Your own friend tried to rob you? Oh my god, this is some sick shit. To police, based on the evidence on the scene, they believed more than one weapon was fired. My guess is that General Ranger, who refused to give them what they wanted, upped his gun at the same time as the men took one with him before he was killed. Donut, who was wanted by Texas authorities for the murder, was arrested just a week after the murder by U.S. Marshal Task Force and local police as he walked near a relative's home in Clovis. Donut was convicted of the murder in late May 2007 and was sentenced to 35 years in jail. He will be released in 2041. The murder took a very heavy toll on D. Rose, just as it would on any child who loses his father. But according to people I have talked to, D. Rose was the same badass kid he has always been. What I have heard, it was not because of his father's death that he drifted in the wrong direction. He was already hanging out with members and had family around him that were members. He basically grew up in it. It was like his path was already written. One thing you must have clear to you in this story is that D. Rose is a real original member of 600, he became affiliated with them at a very young age. His connection with 600 really started due to him actually living in their hood as a youngin. <clears throat> After moving to Motown in 1999, on 51st and Laughlin through 53rd to be exact, he later moved to the Krem building on the corner of 59th and Indiana which is 600 territory. D. Rose went to a private school located on 61st and Michigan which borders 600 and Front State where several other members attended. That's why he became affiliated with 600. D. Rose also has a lot of cousins, among others, 
the brothers G. Muma and 50 Shot Mall, who were outstanding members from Folly Boys. Both got bodies, 50 Shot Mall allegedly got Earl and Wally from No Love City, Peanut from Shields, Temo from 50 Strong, and was allegedly present when Lil Doc from NLC was killed by D. Rose and G. Muma which we will come to later in the story. An interesting detail is that D. <coughs> Rose is also a cousin with FBG Duck from STL slash EBT. As many- Yeah! What the fuck? I did not know that. Hold on. So you telling me one of your main motherfucking ops was your blood cousin? What the fuck? Fuck. If you already know, there are many enemies who are cousins to each other and who would smoke each other on sight. In most cases, members do not care about their cousin reps the other side, blood does not matter, it's on sight either way and they do not stop their friends to go after them, an enemy is an enemy. D Rose also has other <coughs> cousins such as YG, DJ Rello, Ditto and Chop. Growing up with Rose and being around them, running into them when we were shorties, having the freedom to walk to the stoves and, you know, brush across each other a lot. So it was so crazy because, like, a lot of people don't really know how he rose, you know, how we really, how he grew up, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody speaks about him, how he was after everybody was saying his name and all that. But, Nobody really speaks on his upbringing. So really with D-Rose, you know, he the oldest of four. You feel me? His mama and his daddy, really from his mama and his daddy is old town, Motown originals. You feel me? Both of them. <clears throat> daddy got killed way before all of this. Daddy got killed out of town. When he was a shorty, he got him. Then it's his little sister, I, uh, uh, Amaya, which is Lil Pink. Uh, then you got Amir, which is the third child, that's the boy. Then you got Armani, which is the girl. Um, D Rose was the oldest of four. You feel me? D Rose, daddy got killed when he was shorty. D Rose, mama, she she a gangster. She from the block. I mean, she from the town. She a real street girl, but she always wanted the best for her kids. Like she always wanted the best for D-Rose and like when we was a shorty like I always tell y'all the shorty we went to the hood schools Carter, Dunbar, Sexton, uh, uh, Dulles. D-Rose and his siblings didn't go to none of them schools. D-Rose and his siblings was going <clears throat> to the private school that was smack dab in the, in the middle of the hood. D-Rose never went to the to the uh he never went to them, to them schools when we was the shorties. When we was coming up five, six, seven, eighth grade, all that. He never did. He never went to them dirty schools. He never went to the schools that didn't have the money or the everybody that could just enroll. In. He never went to them. It was a private school in the hood that St. Edmunds, which seemed like they owned everything in our hood. They owned the school. He rose and his little sisters and brothers went there. Still, I have man, these bitch ass niggas just shooting up my leg, man. That ain't shit, man. We still up on this L block. Late night, me and maintain. You know, they was just shooting at our legs, little King David. That ain't no shit. Since D Rose's father, Ranger, was a black piece stone. It was very natural for D. Rose to be that too, however, he would not be it for long. Around the time D. Rose became heavily affiliated with 600, in terms of being an actual gang member, D. Rose started claiming <coughs> a black disciple. This was in the years 2009 to 2011 and many say that it was the death of Lil Steve from 600, who was killed by Lil Scrap and Mooch from Mob in 2011, that made D. Rose flip to black disciple. However, Despite flipping to the BD Nation, 
DeRose maintained his good relations with Motown and Folly Boys for obvious reasons and the truth is that DeRose is the single reason that Motown and the BDs have a relationship. In fact, DeRose was the link between many sets, as many of you already know, Rose also repped TYMB, THF44, THF46. How the fuck he repped TYMB? I know they like a renegade set with mix of GDs and BDs, but TYMB, my nigga? O'Block, French State and Lanron. D Rose was the direct link between 600 and most <clears throat> of these gangs, however, not O'Block. The real links between 600 and O'Block were the brothers D Thang and M Thang, who actually lived in Parkway. And if I remember correctly, M Thang was even a member of Wick City before he became 600. D Rose was one of many links between 600 and O'Block. Just like STL and EBT, O'Block and 600 are really the same thing. There were several members, including King Vaughn, D Rose, D Roy, J Mani, M Thang, Manny, and Jubilo, who claimed both sets. One thing with D Rose, he did not just rep all these sets for the fun of it. D Rose was known for sliding and putting in work for all of these sets, which was rare. He rode with DYMB members to do hits on Chris World and Drill City. <clears throat> he rode with DHF 44 to hit up Princeton Mob, and was involved in the war between Motown and 50 Strong. Before we continue with the story of D-Rose, let me tell you about the history of Brick City and 600. 600 is a set that was formed in 2009 by D-Thang and Lil Boo and Houses on 59th to 60th, King Drive to Prairie. Before 600 was formed, they went under the name Brick City, their main block was 59th and Calumet, a long brick alley stretched behind the block hence the name Brick City. Back then, Around 2005 to 2008, Brick City consisted of members who claimed both GD and BD. Members like 600 Breezy, Young Famous, Lil Boo and Stella were all gangster disciples at the time. Then there were BDs such as Ide and C Day from the Randolph Towers, D Thang's older brothers, Trigger and Chief Domo, were also BDs, Huncho Hudo, aka and Lo, all from Brick City, were also black disciples. So it was really a mixture of both BDs and GDs, but that would change. Oh, damn, AK, hold on, nigga. God damn them skinny jeans. Skinny as hell, boy. What the fuck? You can't even fit the motherfucking end of your motherfucking jeans off of this Timberland boot. God damn. In the years 2007 to 2008, most of the today known 600 members, jumped off the porch. Around that time, everybody was hanging out on what would later be called Front Street, at the time, they were known as Dipset. The first blocks they really hung out on were 61st and Wabash, Michigan and Indiana, which is today territory of the set Front Street. This is the reason why so many 600 members have ties to Front Street. Members such as Inky D, Manny and Bosmu were all from Front Street territory, 
however, nobody of them really claimed Dipset at the time. Most of the youngins back then, such as Rondo No. 9 and Lil Steve, claimed Bang City, also known as BCMG, at the time before 600 was created since they were not allowed to claim Brick City. As I previously mentioned, 600 was created in 2009 by <coughs> D-Thang and Lil Boo. The real reason it was created is because D-Thang's older brothers, Chief Domo and Trigger, would not let him claim Brick City due to his young age at the time. D-Rose, who got his nickname from Frito Santana in 2009, was actually one of the first young 600 members to pick up a gun. It is rumored that he began playing with guns in 2009 at the age of 13 and began drilling for real at the age of 15 in 2011 after the death of both Baldy and Lil Steve. The fact is that most young 600 members began drilling at that time, of course, the older Brick City members such as Young Famous, Breezy and Trigger had already put in their fair share of work. The interesting thing with 600 and why it is so mythical, is because the members were basically hand-picked by Lil Boo and D-Thang. This is why 600 was as dangerous as they actually were. Basically everyone slid, everyone was- I'm back y'all, I had to go do some, my bad y'all. ...and everyone wanted a body. It was like LA Capone once tweeted, you gotta catch a body to be a true 600 like me. C-Day, Rondo number 9, Tay 600, Buka 600, D-Thang, Maneski and D-Rose. The first wars Brick City was involved in were minor and personal beefs. Back then, in 2005 to 2008, it were not as serious wars, or rather direct wars between two gangs as it is today. The fact is that Brick City has only lost one member and that is Lil Steve, and not Lil Steve as in Memo's brother, this Lil Steve was killed in late May 2011 by mob, much because of 600's beef with them. The thing is, once 600 started beefing heavily with Jaro City and Mob, Brick City was dragged into the war for obvious reasons. Don't get me wrong, Brick City was already beefing with Jaro City, they pretty much teamed up with 065 Young Money, which later would become DYMB, and Squirt Town to go against Jaro. This was in 2008 to 2010. Another gang that was also drawn into the war was Squirt Town, who often hung out on Brick City's territory, which caused several of their members to get hit when Jaro members came through to shoot up Brick City. Once Squirt Town retaliated, by shooting one of the big guys from Jaro, it was pretty much over for Squirt Town. After this, Jaro came through shooting at them nearly every day and later, Doma from Jaro City would kill slow folks from Squirt Town, and in late September 2011, Tutu, from Jaro City, and Lil B, from EBT, caught Jizzle from Squirt Town, shot him, stood over him, and killed him. Damn. Another beef Brick City was involved in was the conflict with Chief Town and Bully Gang. It has been kind of hard to figure out why these beefs started, I have even talked to several members who don't know what it was actually about since it was so far back in time, we are talking 12 to 14 years ago. However, I do know a little of what happened in the conflict. Chief Town is an old set that barely exists today, most of their young members claim no law or Marcus way today. So it is mostly the old heads from the area that still claim Chave Town. Bully Gang is the set which later became Von World which later became Mob. Von World was created to honor the member Don Von from Bully Gang who was shot dead by Blackgate in March 2010. 
So both of these conflicts were basically with older generations of sets that today still beefs with 600, O Block and Front Street. One member from Brick City that was very active in both of these beefs was the rapper Young Famous, who today is very close with Lil Durk and can be seen in several of his music videos. On August 15, 2010, Young Famous allegedly killed Mojo from No Law slash Chief Town. On September 2, 2012, Lil Jock from 800 basically confirmed that Young Famous killed Mojo in a Twitter conversation with Lil Prince from 800. Jock first tweeted, I didn't even know he killed Mojo until last night, in which Lil Prince responded with who? Jock then answered by writing, 7 from The Reawakening. For those of you who don't know, The Reawakening was a show in Chicago where Young Famous performed under the name 7. In fact, Young Famous still uses the name 7 in his mail for bookings. Ida and D Thang's older brother Trigger has also been rumored to have been on this set. I mean, you know he killed Mojo until last night, who? Seven. Bit uh, from the reawakening. Ain't gonna lie, I seen like 800. They be beefing everybody. The GDs, BDs, Black P, Stones, motherfucking, what else out there? Uh, uh, um, uh, um, that Mexican gang out there. What's their name, bro? God damn. Latin Kings, goddamn, goddamn. Crazy. Mojo, whose real name was Damien Turner, was shot and killed in a drive-by only at the age of 18. Damien's death actually sparked a huge protest march against the emergency health care system at the University of Chicago. The reason for this is because Damien, who was shot on 61st and Cottage Grove, was taken to the Northwestern Memorial Hospital which is 9 miles away instead of one of the multiple hospitals in the area which are located less than a half a mile away from where Damien was shot. That's fucked up. Nah, that's fucked up. These white motherfuckers out there, them white motherfuckers out there in Chicago, bro. That's some fucked up shit. 18 years old. You gonna let a young nigga die on you because you don't want him to go to the white hospital. Ain't that some shit. The reason for this is because the University of Chicago and all other south side <laughs> hospitals like a level one trauma center. Although it is uncertain whether a closer trauma center might have saved Damien's life, his death has renewed questions about why the south- What? Like a level one trauma center? So- all the other Southside hospitals, they don't have a level one trauma center. So what they do there? Get shots, that's it? Let people go on? That's it, just get shots. Make appointments. That's what all Southside hospitals do. Instead of having a level one trauma center. Really. Southside, which continues to be plagued by violence, lacks a facility that can offer more immediate and comprehensive surgical care. It would have taken about a minute in a vehicle to get Damien to the UFC hospital, his mother, Sheila Rush said the other day, as she prepared to join a march protesting what she said was a gaping hole in the city's emergency health care system. My sweet baby could still be alive today if the UFC had a trauma center. It's just down the street. Damien was pronounced dead less than 90 minutes after the bullet ripped into his back. Just as I said earlier, Young Famous was involved in the conflict with both Chief Town and Bully Gang. He is rumored to have killed Michael from Bully Gang around 2008 to 2009 together with 600 Breezy. Young Famous was really one of the most active Brick City members around that time. An interesting detail is that Mojo was close with several members from Jaro City such as Gucci who have honored him several times.
Just as I mentioned before, once 600 got active and the beef with mob, STL slash EBT and Jaro escalated, most of the Brick City members started claiming 600 instead and Brick City became a thing of the past. D Thang and Lil Boo also implemented a non-GD policy which caused former GD members from Brick City to become black disciples. Since Brick City was already into it with Bully Gang slash Vaughn World, and Jaro, it is pretty obvious why 600 got into it with Mob and Jaro City. However, back in the day, before it became Jaro City, Jaro was divided into different gangs like ABM, Cobb and Darkseid that later would come together to form Jaro City after the death of Jarvis. At this time, the Wick, which today is known as Oblock, were actually cool with the BD side of Jaro City on some strictly BD business while Brick City was deep into it with every side of Jaro. Members like Skinny and Chief Keef, and Motor and King Von, actually used to hang out around this time, before they became enemies. This is why you can see several conversations between Von and Motor on Twitter about how they used to hang out back in the day. Even some of the GDs from ABM drifted towards Wick City and used to hang out in Parkway. Anyway, this created tension between Brick City and Wick City since Brick City rolled with the SKD movement and was at war with every set that would later become Jaro City, even the BD's side, which the Wick was cool with. Wick City on the other hand, were at war with the SKD movement and had even dropped bodies on them. This is the reason there was tension between them, however it was stopped by D Thang and M Thang before anything became too serious. Hold on, huh? Whoa, 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 huh? SKD was war with every set that would later become Jaw, even the BD side, which the Wick was still cool with. Wick, on the other hand, while well, war with the SKD movement and having even dropped bodies on them. Damn. Was cool with. Wick City, on the other hand, were at war with the SKD movement and had even dropped bodies on them. This is the reason there was tension between them. However, it was stopped by D Thang and M Thang before anything became too serious. Now we leave the story of Brick City and go instead to their successor, 600. 600's beef with both Jaro City, Mob and STL slash EBT around 2009 to 2010. We can start the war with STL slash EBT. The things is, 600 and STL slash EBT wasn't and never has been each other's main enemies like that, it has only dropped one or two bodies between the two sets one of which D-Rose was responsible for in December 2011. Of course, 600 was sliding together with Oblock. It was 600 members present when Oblock killed both Model. Cap FCK-12 was allegedly present at the Brick and Kobe hit. Boss Trell was allegedly present when Domo from Jaro City killed D-Thang and some claim STL slash EBT were involved in the Baldi hit. But this is all unconfirmed information so I would say three bodies at most have been dropped between the two. Back in the day, Brick City and STL slash EBT weren't into it with each other like that until they became tight with Wick City. Yes, they didn't like each other but STL slash EBT focused on Wick City and TYMB while Brick City slash 600 focused on Mob and Jaro City. Just like with Wick City and STL slash EBT, it also started with fist fights between 600 and STL slash EBT. Once Brick City slash 600 got real close with Wick City and started hanging in Parkway and vice versa, a few of the members got into fights with members from STL slash EBT. For example, Ide got into a fight with Seaball and Duck got into a fight with Manny from 600. Once Baldy got killed, some people, including myself, believe STL were involved with. The killers I personally believe were involved are Scrap from Mob and Main Main from STL. However, it doesn't really matter who was behind it, what matters is all the mocking that came with it which caused the hate escalating between 600 and STL. Baldi was 600's first loss and after his death, 
both Facebook and Twitter flourished with memes and mockery of Balbi which was passed around between Jaro, Mob and STL slash EBT. The mockery on social media had a huge influence on the escalating hate between the two. Around this time, FBG Duck and Billionaire Black started dissing 600 in songs, Ide responded with dissing towards STL in his songs and now it was pretty much on site between the two. The wars with Mob and Jaro City are pretty much self-explanatory, as I said before. Brick City were already into it with them, or rather the sets which would later become Jaro City and Mob so 600 basically inherited the beefs. However, once 600 came about, the wars escalated, much thanks to the mockery on social media and with the drill music which was just starting to explode in Chicago. A well-known person who was killed in the war between Jaro City and Brick City was Hadi who many have believed was D. Thang's work, however whether that's true or not I don't know. Like I said earlier, D. Thang wasn't even allowed to be Brick City at the time, so I don't really believe he killed Hadi despite the fact Dome said, this is for Hadi before killing D. Thang. I think it was meant more like Brick City killed our friend, now we get revenge and kill you. Also. D. Thang's older brother Trigger even said that D. Thang did not kill Hadi. However, it's pretty known that it was in fact Brick City who got him since 600 Breezy admitted on Twitter being present at the murder, however which member is unknown, we're talking 14 years back in time. What I want to say is that the war between Jaro City, and Mob, was already on when 600 came about. However, as I previously stated, with the rise of drill music, social media and young in starting to use firearms instead of their fists, the war exploded with Jaro City and Mob. In 2009, Beans from Brick City slash 600 shot Gucci from Jaro City which he ended up getting 20 years in jail for. It was basically shootouts almost on a daily basis now between 600 and Jaro City, Dome got shot by Stello and Inky D on separate occasions in 2010 and also got into shootouts with Ide and 600 Breezy, it was really only a matter of time before bodies were about to drop. Not on no funny shit, I seen how the brain spill out, that was what, 06, 07? I've been around for a long time. Y'all new in words stay in your lane. Damn. Twenty eleven was really the year the war with Jaro City and Mob popped off for real. In two thousand nine to twenty ten, it was mostly shootouts and whatnot. In twenty eleven, the bodies started to drop. The first one to go was Lil Steve from Brick City, as I told you about earlier. He was killed in the late May twenty eleven in a drive-by shooting, allegedly by Mob. Just two months later, six hundred followed their first member, Baldy who was allegedly killed by Mob and STL. Mob actually gave 600 hell for most of the time, some 600 members didn't even like to slide on Mob because they would always retaliate quickly. One month it was time again when Mob and STL killed OD from Wick City who was close with several members from 600. God damn! My bad y'all, I had a motherfucking bug on my shit. The hell? Let me go back a few seconds. 600 hell for most of the time, some 600 members didn't even like to slide on Mob because they would always retaliate quickly. One month it was time again when Mob and STL killed OD from Wick City who was close with several members from 600. 600 really had it tough that summer. However, the war with Jaro City was pretty calm that summer and it was a reason for that. In the early summer of 2011, 
600 and Jaro City agreed on a truce between the gangs and that truce stemmed from a shootout between 50 Shot and Lil Boo and not because of what 600 claimed, that they gave Jaro hell. The shootout between 50 Shot and Lil Boo, where several bullets hit a school bus, was not the only reason that led to the agreement but also that the police had a good view of the war between the gangs and planned to hit both sides with a RICO, that alone was the reason both sides actually honored the truce several months. However, the truce did not stop the members from getting into fights or robbing each other, the only thing they refrained from was shooting. d Thang, who was a bit like a maniac, used to cycle through Jaro City's turf during this time because he thought it was fun to scare them and see them run, even though he did not intend to do anything due to the truce. However, d Thang still robbed a few guys like King Lil J and also took DB's shirt. Because of d Thang being so passive-aggressive, Jaro was kept on edge which is why Tutu and Lil Hill would walk DB home just in case, they did not trust D Thang would actually honor the truce this long. Once Baldi was killed by Mob in the summer of 2011, 600 turned their attention to Mob. D Thang's name was extremely hot in 2011. However, all the top guys from Jaro were laid back at the time, as well as the shorties, and if they were sliding, it was on Oblock. After a long time of bullying by d Thang, Dome decided to step up and do something about it. However, he was not the only one to step up, he had already taken Boss Drill under his wing and he was a heavy shooter already, drilling at DYMB in Zone 7, so he was down to ride with Dome to kill d Thang, which they did. Not only did they kill d Thang, they also killed the truce with 600. According to police, Dome is said to have said, this is for Hottie. Dome was later charged and booked for the murder. Recently, in the summer of 2021, he committed suicide in jail. I already know, man. Jaro City, Hardy World, 50 shots, man. Doing my thing, 2 2 gang. You know, Mr. Cash out on hollows. Y'all thought it was over with, but I'm on my way back. Fuck the ops, fuck the cops, free me, motherfucker. Ills. Shortly after 600 lost one of their founders, d Thang, they lost another member, Lil Steve, as in Memo 600's brother, not the Lil Steve I talked about earlier. Lil Steve was allegedly killed by Lil Scrap and Moochie from Mob, both were arrested for the murder but later released for lack of evidence. Just like with d Thang, this was a huge loss for 600. Steve Drive was created in his honor. Lil Steve was very active in the streets, after Baldi was killed, allegedly by Lil Scrap, he went to Scrap, <clears throat> who had recently moved to 600 territory, and shot up his house. A crazy detail is that Lil Scrap's dad used to go to 600's block and beg them not to kill his son. The day Lil Steve was killed, they got a call that Scrap was on the block, Lil Steve and some other guys went to confront him. Lil Scrap then started shooting at Lil Steve who was just standing there yelling at the other members with him to shoot back at Scrap. On top of losing Lil Steve, 600 also lost a close friend and affiliate in Jizzle from Squirt Down who was killed by Q2 from Jaro City and Lil B from EBT, only a week after Lil Steve was killed. It would however soon turn for 600. In the beginning they were actually overwhelmed by the pressure Jaro and Mob put on them but as always, the tables would turn. Almost every member from 600 had now started playing with guns and D-Rose was one of them. 
There are many who do not know this but D. Rose was actually one of the first members to pick up a gun and I highly suspect that he got a body already in 2009 to 2010, and I will tell you why I think so. D. Rose actually got his name from Frito Santana in 2009, and Take Capone recently stated that D. Rose only needed one to get the name, which makes me believe that he actually caught one in 2009 or 2010. However, I have no idea who that would have been and D. Rose was only 13 to 14 at the time so I could be wrong. In addition, I'm not quite sure if Take Capone just meant he shot someone or actually killed someone. You know, Steve, he a bug. It's to a point now. Well, you feel me? Folks them died, he like, nah, fuck that, nigga. That bitch ass nigga steady trying to get. Man, fuck it, we gonna finish it. I ain't gonna lie. Fuck it, we gonna finish it. I'm sorry, he gonna cool. finish it, fuck it. Man, look, Steve, walk to that nigga crib and put slugs all through that bitch. Cause this shit interesting, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know who D Rose and Six Hundred is. You feel me? I don't know none of these. I don't know none of these people. Of course, I heard about him. You feel me? D Rose and Six Hundred because of Chief Keith and them. You dig know what I'm saying? But I don't know who he really is or who Six Hundred really is. You feel me? It's kind of a new cat. kind of a learning. You feel me? I'm just learning some new shit. Went to the scrap crib, and put slugs all through that motherfucker on phone now. Feel me? Like he real live. No, no. No talking, no none. He he walked right over there. Put slugs all through that bitch. He put he put slugs all through scrap crib. No cap. He lit that bitch up like a Christmas tree. Look, Steve, what play? He said, fuck it, we can't never catch this bitch ass nigga coming out the crib. His daddy want to keep walking over here and try to call Peace Streets. Nah, no, man, they the kill folk. Something to go on. Man, he walked the Blood Bride crib, man, and put slugs in that motherfucker, man. He said, I don't give a fuck who went up. <laughs> this nigga, look, Steve, was crazy, man. <laughs> he ain't get no fuck. Like I said, the tables would turn, a little less than two months after the murder of Lil Steve, revenge would come, however not on Mob, but on Jaro City, and on one of members responsible for the murder of Jizzle from Squirt Town. I am of course talking about Tutu from Jaro City. On November 10th, 2011, Tutu was in an alley smoking in the 6500 block of South Rhodes Avenue when C. Day allegedly ran up to him and shot him multiple times all over his body. Buka, Rondo and Take Capone were allegedly with C. Day that day, and it has even been rumored that Rondo also put shots into Tutu. Beans from McBlock even posted a taunting picture of Tutu on Instagram in November 2013 with the caption, FM, shout out 600 Rondo. An interesting detail about the 2-2 murder is that Rondo and Tay Capone caught 2-2 and Corey from Jaro City in the exact same alley in August 2011, just a few months before the murder. The thing is that 2-2 was caught lacking in the exact same alley doing the exact same thing as when he was killed a few months later. Rondo and Tay Capone caught 2-2 and Lil Corey from Jaro City, in the same alley, however at that time, 2-2 managed to run away while he left Corey behind to get shot up by Tay and Rondo. Corey luckily survived the shooting. Tay Capone even admitted to this in a tweet regarding the incident. This alley was an alley plenty of STL and Jaro members took pictures and recorded music videos at 600. DYMB and O'Block knew this, so it was a common place for them to check for enemies. I doubt these two incidents were the only times they checked that spot. They were probably often out there lurking to catch somebody. After the murder, Tutu Gang was created to honor his memory.
Another interesting detail with the Chu Tu murder is that right after C Day, Rondo and the other got back to wherever they were laying low at. The first stop C Day actually contacted was none other than FBG Duck, who recently was put on house arrest. FBG Duck uploaded a Facebook post about this and even hinted about sliding that same night. This is a very common phenomenon in the gang war in Chicago, to call up the enemies to taunt and mock, especially after murders. No Limit did it after KT Stray was killed for example. Another crazy part which connects to the Tutu 2 murder is that his funeral was actually shot up by 600. However, the whole shooting was a big failure, bite down, Manny, Rondo number 9, and his killer, Cide, all hopped out shooting. People ran in panic but it was mostly innocent families in the crowd, the 600 members bailed out pretty quickly from the scene. It was over in just seconds once 600 released it was mostly females running around in panic. The preacher at the funeral said he has PTSD to this day due to the funeral shooting. The mockery of 2-2 flourished on social media after the murder, not least by the alleged killer, Cide. In December 2012, Cide probably wrote one of his most horrific tweets ever when he tweeted, I'll dig Carlton Grave up and re-kill him. 600, and not least Cide had a very personal beef with 2-2, that's why they dissed him so much. 2-2 would often get into fights and shootings with 6 0 members, Rondo and Tay for example, and also killed Jizzle, probably because he was heavily affiliated with 600 and Brick City. 2-2 was even close to catching C-Day back in 2011 in the Washington Park by the Grammar School, however C-Day managed to run away. 2-2 was mocked by damn near every member from 600 and a block which you will soon see in the tweets I will display. Lil Durk even dissed him in the song Still Trappin', featuring King Von, where he rapped, this 2-2 smoke. Now we move on from 2-2 and instead go into the next revenge by 600 and D-Rose in particular. I'm talking about the murder of Dale from STL slash EBT. Now before we get into this murder, I must say it's a lot of uncertainty about who actually killed him. It has for long been rumored that D-Rose killed him and according to the people I have talked to, D-Rose was definitely present, however others said it was D-Roy and the block who was behind it. Which is actually true is impossible to know, it could have been both 600 and the block as well. The thing with D Rose is that most of the work put in was when he was a minor which makes it basically impossible to receive documents due to him being a minor. D Rose was even a minor when he got picked up for the murder of Big V, he hadn't had time to turn 18 yet. I just wanted to get that out of the way, because basically nothing of D Rose's work is confirmed and probably never will. Not even the Big V murder since D. Rose was actually innocent. I just wanted to get it out of the way before we move on to the actual murder.
on December 3rd. Some of these guns, these motherfuckers from World War II, I ain't gonna lie. Niggas out there had fofos, you feel me? Hey, we ain't had switches. I, I said we. They ain't had switches back in two, 2011, 2012, nigga. They had fo 44 fo 44 fo 44 fo 44 fo you know what I'm saying? They ain't had that big shit that we got. Now that little, that little pistol thing that shoot about 30 bullets in the, in the second. You feel me? You don't got that. You know what I'm saying? They ain't had it. You know what I'm saying? 2011. Dale was walking with a friend near 62nd and South St. Lawrence Avenue. Friends say the two were headed to a corner store to buy a bag of potato chips when a two-door silver car pulled up. A gunman, allegedly D. Rose, leaned out and opened fire at Dale and his friend. Dale was struck seven times in total all over his body except the head. Dale, whose real name was Dale Fisher and who was only 16 years old, was tragically pronounced dead at the hospital shortly after the attack. His friend who was walking with him was luckily not touched by any bullets. Before Dale was shot, he had just left a recreational center run by the city's ceasefire organization. Stephen, who was working at ceasefire at the time, said that Dale didn't have any enemies and that he wasn't that type of kid. He wasn't out in these streets gangbanging or carrying a gun. Steven said that he got to know Dale who was nicknamed Squirrel by his friends after he became a regular at the local recreational center where he came almost every day to play video games and watch YouTube videos of local rappers. Steven also said that Dale was a goofy kid, in a positive way, that he would make you laugh and that he never really had any problems. He was like our little mascot, he said. Dale's family also said that Dale wasn't in a gang and that he chose not to hang in the family's new Chatham neighborhood, but in the area where he was killed because that's where he grew up and that's where most of his friends still lived. A day after the murder, there were tokens and messages of love standing in remembrance of Dale who attended Hyde Park Academy High School, the same school as King Bun and a dozen other members attended. Why take mine? That was all I had, Damn. said Romana, Dale's mother. His family, along with many others of those who knew him, said they believe his death is the result of mistaken identity. Left nipple lies into an exit in in their side of the elbow crease. Into an exit in the side of left forearm into mid back exit lower chest. Into left side of groin exit mid left back into front of upper right thigh exit left lower back. God damn. Now I don't want to speak for the family. But the truth is that most of the victims loved ones say exactly the same thing when their sons die because they don't want them to be portrayed as criminals to the public. It is of course understandable but I think that Dale was killed due to his affiliation with STL slash EBT since he hung out with many of their members. However, I also believe Dale was a bystander or hung around, with that said. I don't believe he was killed because of mistaken identity but because he was hung with members from STL slash EBT. Many even blamed STL for the death of both Modell and Dale since they were not really about that life but were more hangarounds. Booby from Jaro City even tweeted about this and said that STL was fake for not sliding for Modell which KI and Booby came into a dispute over since KI actually did slide for Modell. KI and other STL members like Dutchie have also said that Modell and Dale were not really with it and were just innocent hangarounds. After the murder, Dale Mob was created to honor his memory. Another interesting detail to this murder that ties it to 600, is that Dale was the little brother of Main Main from STL who allegedly killed Baldy from 600 as I told y'all about earlier. I'm not saying this could be direct proof that 600 did it but it's definitely an interesting detail. Also, in the song Down Me by King Von and Lil Dirk, King Von rapped, 
Dude looked just like him so we killed his twin. This is probably a long reach but Main Main and Dale looked very similar. Would escalate further, O Block and 600 would get even tighter, and D Rose was steadily adding bodies to his count. New wars would also be created, as many also know as 600 also into it with O5 One Young Money, many thought, including myself, that the war with O5 One started in 2011 when T Streets was killed since many have connected that murder to M Tang, Manny and AK from 600. However, that seems to be false. However, in early 2012, 051 would draw the first blood by killing Shaq from 600. Rocco from 051 Young Money even stated in a police interview that the war with 600 started in 600 which pretty much confirms that 600 had nothing to do with D Streets. Members from 051 have also tweeted that they are a 46k for T Streets. I will tell you about this and much more in the second part of this story. This was the first part of the story of D Rose and 600. I hope you enjoyed. God damn, I ain't gonna lie. That shit was interesting to be honest. I'm gonna keep it 100. Cause that right there. Yeah, that's some dark shit. I ain't gonna lie. D Rose, 600. Chicago in general is just goddamn. They was putting that environment. They friends was put in that environment. So motherfuckers really, really be thinking. Just because you get put in that environment, you can make it out. You dig what I'm saying? Most, most people not going to make it out the hood. That's just a simple fact. You know what I'm saying? And that's a sad fact. But God damn, man. He was FBG Duck cousin too, which makes it worse. You dig what I'm saying? I'm talking about worse, worse. That shit's sad, to be honest. But, hey, man, if y'all like the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like button, comment down below that so I should react to it. I know I said I was only going to do 30 minutes, but it was too interesting to, to just leave it off at 30. Y'all ain't going to lie, but, hey, man, I'm out, man. I love y'all. We gone.